Good. I'm going to give you an estimate. Huh? I'm going to give you an estimate, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that you emailed me some pictures of yeah. the steam boiler. I said, uh, yeah. I really got to see that in person, but here's a range. So let's see what you got. Sorry, I didn't know you were coming this fast. I didn't clear up. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> you know, let the weekend start. Yeah. <laughs> if you need more room, I can move some stuff out, but let's see how it goes. All right. Uh, so you have a... All right. What are you guys using for a makeup air in here? What? Is this window normally open? No, not really. Okay. Should be, right? I know. Well, think about it. Um, think about it this way. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big the boiler is. How big is this thing? Um, 100 and... Oh, sorry. Uh, 150. You have a 150,000 BTU boiler that gives that produces steam, which then heats your house. Mm -hmm. So picture... 40,000 candles burning in here when the boiler is on. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's getting that oxygen to, to breathe? It's not. I guess through the chimney, right? No, 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 no. To breathe. Oh, to breathe. Not okay. to exhaust, not okay. to exhale. Oh, okay. To breathe. So if you have 40,000 candles burning in this in this mm -hmm. small space. Now, granted, yes, the, the water that you have there, it has two pipes. One pipe is exhaust, one pipe is fresh air. Mm -hmm. So it can burn its own, so it has something to burn with. Right. But here you don't have that. So you have to, this window has to be permanently open. And letting all the cold air in, huh? <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> You're going to keep the boiler running more and more and more and more because now it's cold and the cold air is coming or, in. Or you, you, you insulate cold. the room, this closet better because there's no insulation in the ceiling. And there needs to be, by the way. Okay. You need to have fireproofing above the, on, on the ceiling, uh, which is three-quarter sheetrock mm -hmm. above this. You don't have that here. Okay. Again, we're yeah. going to do it the right way. We're going to do it. We're going to do it the right way. Yeah. Um, all right, so you have the steam boiler, and you have you have a hit the zone in the basement. No. Yes. You do. Um, I have the. Does the, it work? The, the, yeah, there's a pump the circulator, here. and you want to maintain that. Yeah, yeah, because I have the the thermostat right here. Okay. And then it just circulates. In All right, so we have our steam main going up there. There's the Hartford loop. There's the equalizer. Okay. I'm gonna rip all this stuff out. Redo it all. Okay. I gotta tell you, you know what? You explain combustion air to people in layman's terms and it means, and some people still don't fucking get it. I don't get it. You have a 150,000 BTU boiler. Oh, fuck. Yep, we have a uh, year. This is what you get for paying taxes here in New York. Look at this, you get flooded roads, right? You think after all the times that this road floods that the New York City Department of Transportation would fix this fucking shithole, but they don't, right? They don't. High tide, they don't give a fuck. They just want to line their pockets. See this? You think you explain it, it means, okay, listen, you have a 150,000 BTU boiler. Let's say, let's say you have 40,000 candles. Forget about the heat that each one produces, right? Forget about that. How do you expect 40,000 candles to burn in that small boiler room? How do you expect that to happen? We all know that if we put a candle inside of a box and close the box and the candle's lit, that the candle flame will be extinguished because of lack of oxygen. We all know that. Right? And it doesn't have to be an airtight box, just a box. You put a candle inside a box, it's going to extinguish itself because there's not enough oxygen. But his, his theory is that, well, it's worked for 21 years. And then I look at a hazard tag that National Grid left on the boiler in 2003. And it says carbonized boiler, system shut down. I took a picture of it right here. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Sometimes you give analogies to people and they understand it, but ladies and gentlemen, if you have something that burns fuel, 
It needs oxygen to burn. We were taught that in kindergarten. Elementary school. This is this is not like physics, you know, where actually it is, but this is not like college physics in pre-algebra and you know crazy shit like that. This is simple stuff like knowing ABCs and one, two, threes, you know, and you need to breathe, otherwise you're gonna die. Right? If we don't breathe, we're gonna die. If a candle doesn't breathe, it's gonna die. If your boiler doesn't breathe, it's gonna die. So anyway, I give him a price, you know, seventeen and a half thousand bucks to uh, replace his boiler. Yeah, I mentioned the price. Why the fuck not? All right? We're gonna have to do fan in a can. You know, I priced that at around fifteen hundred bucks, seventeen hundred bucks. We got insulation on all of the steam piping that we touched. All right? We have the boiler. We have piping. We have a drop header. We have a zone for the basement. Um. All the material? What do you think it fucking costs? And he goes, oh, it was a little bit higher than I thought it was going to be. I was like, well, you sent me a picture to my email, right? And this is like pre-qualified callers, by the way. And I'm surprised Peter let this one slip, but I'll remind him when I get back to the shop, right? When someone calls in my office and they want an estimate to replace something, first question is, okay, where are you located? I mean, let's make sure you're in a service territory, all right? Or you want to pay for my time to come out there. Number two, are all the decision makers going to be present for the estimate? Okay. Sometimes you get the husband and the wife together. Sometimes you just get the wife or the husband, but you want to get all the decision makers there. And I don't want to push too much. And I generally don't, right? But I want to make sure that everyone's, I don't want to repeat myself again on the phone. Like, oh, I'm not really the person you need to be telling this to, but you know, tell my husband or tell my wife, she wears the pants. Um, time frame and looking to get this done is number three. If you're looking to do this next year and it's April, I'm not coming out to you. I'm not, right? If you want to send me a, a picture of what you have, some video of what you have, I'll be more than to give you more than glad to give you a ballpark estimate of what you're going to be spending, depending on if you're a Met fan or a Yankee fan, because those are the two sports teams we have here for baseball that play in ballparks in fucking New York. By the way, I wonder what plays in Orlando. Could someone tell me in the comments section down below what baseball team is in Orlando? Hopefully there's two. So I can use those same lines when I do jobs in Orlando, which I'm going to Monday and Tuesday next week. I can't wait to go to Florida. I fucking hate New York. I really do. <sighs> Red light camera. Did I make it? I sure did. Fuck yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just frustrated, you know. So, I give him, a, I give him a, 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 you know, a firm number while I'm there, and he goes a little more than I expected. But I told him that you're going to be in the mid-teens in an email. And what did he do today? He called the office today. He's like, "Listen, I'm off today. If it's possible, I'd like to get, you know, if if, if uh, Mike can come today, I would love it." And sure enough, I was there a half hour after he called it. Don't waste my time, people. If you need an estimate for something you're doing in the next few weeks or a month. No problem. I'll be coming out to you as soon as possible, as long as you're in the area, and let's get the job done. You need financing? Perfect. You know, if you need 18 months interest refinancing, I got you. You use this commercial project, you have, uh, you need some financing, I got you there too. Bad credit, good credit, no credit, buy here, pay here doesn't exist. That's Connor Dyack at d, &D Sales and Service. Check him out, Connor's Cars, Connor Dyack on YouTube. He has buy here, pay here. I'm not the HVAC contract that leases boilers and furnaces. We don't. <coughs> yes, there are HVAC contractors that will lease you a HVAC system. And you will pay $100 a month until you're fucking dead. I kid you not. I kid you fucking not. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday. It's almost 12 o'clock. I gotta do some Shabbat Nash shopping and then go to the office, drop off the truck and hop into the J-Wagon. The wife's BMW X7 died yesterday and now she's driving my other car. Yeah, get into the car and uh, I was gonna go get some sushi with the guys. You know, they had a late day, Peter and Daniel. And um, I get in the car and um, 
this weird sounding car, different than normal. And it's on the main display, it says, welcome guest. I'm like, oh, this is fucking weird. It never says this. And, um, oh, if shit. If you're not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. There you go.